Welcome to another tutorial on the smoke program and its functions. For this video, we will show instructors how to schedule a course, how to add instructors to the course, and if necessary, how to request an exam through the Bureau of Fire Services. From the login page of smoke, the instructor or the course manager is gonna to wanna to log in with their credentials, their PIN number or email, and then their password. From within the system, if you are an instructor, you will have a course management button on the left-hand side. Go ahead and open that up using the blue chevron and select the schedule training function. The first page that you will see is an informational page. Please remember that we work on a state fiscal year for our training calendar. If we are in within that year, it should default, but just double check that year to make sure you're working in the proper year. Select your region as a, just a quick identifier. If you are below a line running from north of Muskegon County to north of St. Clair County, anything south of that is region two. All the counties in the upper lower peninsula and the entire upper peninsula are considered to be region one. Go ahead and select your region. <clears throat> Once you do so, you're going to have a county box. Once you've selected a region, it is, will pare down your counties to only those counties within that region. For this case, let's go ahead and select Muskegon. Once you've done that, you'll notice that some information populates. You're going to see who the CTC chair, that is the county training committee chairperson. This is a requirement if you're going to schedule a funded program. The next person that you're going to see is our training coordinator. These are contracted coordinators that we send out to proctor exams for firefighter one and two and for the various instructor levels at this time. The last box that you're going to see is who is your current region coordinator. That is the final approver of courses within the particular region. In this case, region two is myself, TJ Richardson. The next couple of boxes you're going to see is it a train the trainer. Most instructors will not see this box. I have that box because I am an administrator. Uh, the next box you will see is a question, are the course or courses attached to this application closed to users within a specific department or basically departments within a county? What this means is, is are you running a straight in-house program that you do not want open to the public? Most of the time we're gonna say no. If you select yes, at that point, only the course manager is able to register students in the program. For this particular program, I'm gonna act as the course manager. The shipping information will default to the course manager's primary address within the system. The next step is to designate a sponsoring organization. This sponsoring organization, that's the fire department that is going to act as the primary host of the program. If you'll notice, you're gonna get a red circle you cannot free type in the field. Utilize the magnifying glass to bring up a search engine, and then you can type in the name of the department that you want to utilize. Spelling counts. Go ahead, in this case, I'm looking for Norton Shores. Once we have them and you verify the address, go ahead and select. And you'll notice that that now adds that to the system at the bottom. If you are done with this page, select the navy blue save training at the bottom of the page. Please note some new information. Very often when you reach out to your region coordinator, we ask you for what is your tracking number? That number at the top, that is your tracking number. The first four digits are the fiscal year. The middle digit is your region code one or two. And then the last four digits is the true tracker. Those numbers are populated sequentially by region from the beginning of each fiscal year. Notice we have a new button, courses. This is where we're going to add courses. You can add as many courses to a single tracking number as necessary. The one thing you cannot do is duplicate a course ID within the same tracking number. So in this instance, we're gonna schedule a driver's training program. From the search field, you can go ahead and type in driver's training. Gives us an option there. If that's not the one you're looking for, again, double check spelling. And there we have some additional choices. 
For this particular instance, we're going to schedule the old tried and true VFIS driver's training. So you find the code B05D. Remember, if you're trying to use a code, do not use the letter O within the two middle two digits. It has to be a zero. Let's go ahead and select that. And now we're going to look for an instructor. In this particular circumstance, you'll notice it says instructor search, first name, last name, pin, city, county. That does not mean you can enter all of those particular fields. You have to select one preferably either a last name or a PIN. The PIN number is kind of an almost absolute that should get you right to who you're looking for. In this case, I'm gonna enter 611956, press my search, and that's the person I'm looking for. I'm looking for David Purchase. Once you have that, go ahead and hit select. This is now going to bring up some information for the details of your program. When are we gonna start the program? BFS, Firefighter Training Division, asks that you do not schedule a program in less than six weeks from when you submit the, in, or submit the course. We need that time in order to properly process the courses. So let's look at a date in the future. We're going to run this program, let's say, on May the 4th. It's a start date. The end date will be the same. That is a, an eight-hour program. When do you want to start? That start time is going to be the start time of the first day of your program. Single day is fairly easy, but if you're going to run over multiple days, we want the start time of the first day. So let's, do, uh, let's get everybody up early and do an 8 o'clock start. The total number of participants, you're going to see a red asterisk, asterisk here. The minimum number of participants is normally 15. You can request an exception. But let's go ahead and enter. We'll say we're going to have 15 students. We determine that that is a Saturday. That will be the same day that we run a written exam. Driver's training still has an exam. So again, let's reach out there into the future. We're going to do the written exam. It's an eight-hour program. If we start at eight, let's say we're going to do a five o'clock exam. There is a practical component to this program. We're going to go ahead and do that for the same time. Now you'll note at the bottom, again, you have a course and exam location. The address and the information in there will default to whoever your sponsoring organization is. If you need to make changes, you can actually do that as this is a free text field. You could do something like saying that the written exam is going to be at that particular address. something along those lines, okay? Once you are comfortable, go ahead and hit Save Changes. You are gonna then note that we have a brand new full course number. If you look at the course number, 2019-2-61, the 61 is the county designator for Muskegon County. B05D, that is the course ID for VFIS driver's training. And then again, we have those last four digits that is a tracking number. If, those, if that's the only course you want to add, go ahead and return to the training record button and you'll make note that there is a new button at the bottom, a green button that says submit for approval. Once you've done that successfully, again under the red line you're going to see another new tab, training approval. As the course manager, once you hit submit for approval, you have automatically approved that by default. You'll notice some additional approval requirements. Training coordinator will now approve your course. Once the training coordinator approves it, the red and green box will appear under the region coordinator. Once your region coordinator approves it, another red and green box will appear under FFTC admin. In this particular case, that is the opposite region coordinator from where the course originates. So for instance, if you register a course in region two, the FFTC admin will be Dan Hammerberg from Region 1. If you register a Region 1 course, the inverse is true. It'll be myself down here in Region 2. We hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your Region Coordinator.